I'm going to be stitching out the football helmet. I've loaded the design into my machine and the first and I've um, placed tearaway stabilizer in my hoop. I know it's tearaway because it tears real easy as you can see here. Um, I'm going to start the machine and the first thing that will happen is it will stitch a square block uh, which is a placement line where I will lay my background fabric. So let's get started. So I'm going to place my background square inside the lines that, inside the placement line that was just stitched. I have prepared my background by placing, by fusing some Pallon Shape Flex to the back of it. This is sold in stores, people commonly call it SF101, but it's, it's a product put out by Pallon, it's a stabilizer, a product put out by Pallon called Shape Flex, and it just gives you a very professional result. Um, it acts like a, a, an additional stabilizer. So I'm going to go ahead and start the machine and tack uh, my, my background square onto my stabilizer. Um, I recommend that you put tape in the corners. Um, since I digitized and I know how everything is going to be stitched out, I'm not going to do that. Once that is tacked down in place, I'm going to start the machine again. I don't need to do anything, but what the machine is going to do is it's going to stitch the outline of the helmet, and that's going to tell me where to put my helmet fabric. Okay, so that placement line has stitched out. Now I'm going to lay um, some fabric with some batting underneath it um, over the placement lines. Um, I like to put a little batting underneath my applique because it makes it puff up a little bit. just makes it look just that much nicer. Um, I recommend that you put some tape in all four corners. Again, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use my fingers, but I recommend that you put the tape down. notice that the design went around twice. It stitched around the uh, fabric twice. And so you have a really nice firm attachment so that when you get ready to trim you can actually kind of pull and kind of pull up the fabric without the stitches coming undone. When you trim out, trim away all this excess fabric, you should really put the hoop on a flat surface like I've done here. And then you need to kind of pull up on the fabric and trim as close to those stitches as you possibly can trim uh, without cutting through the stitches. Really sharp applique scissors. I like these for big applique because they're uh, long and skinny and they have very sharp points. These scissors are by Faymore. Okay, all this is just trash. You can throw it away. And then what I'd like you to do is put the hoop back into your machine and we're going to do some more stitching. The part that we'll stitch next will be some satin stitching around the helmet. So I want my stitching to match the fabric of the helmet. So I have put red bobbin and red top thread in my machine. And now I'm going to start it. Now 
Now you probably notice that it didn't do any satin stitching back here and up front. That's so that when the face mask is stitched out, there'll be a little section over here that's filled with your other color of thread. And I don't know what you call this back part, but that'll stitch out too. Um, and uh, so I've gone ahead and I'm going to do a dark, like a charcoal or gunpowder gray. And I've already changed my thread and my bobbin uh, for that color, so you'll need to do that too. And I'm going to put my hoop back in the machine and just stitch that part out and then it will be done. Okay, before you remove it, um, well, you're done now, but um, one of the things you need to do is turn turn it over to the other side in this inner stitch, the one with the real big stitches. Those are just a temporary basting stitch. You can go ahead and remove those and take them out. And it's a lot easier to remove basting stitches or actually any time you have to rip. It's a lot easier to do it with the bobbin thread than it is with the top thread because you only have to do like every fourth or fifth stitch, something I learned a long time ago. Um, I'm one of the fastest rippers on the face of the earth, so that's my trick. I always flip it over to the bobbin side. After you've removed the basting stitches, just go ahead and tear away as much stabilizer as you possibly can without killing yourself.